Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is December 2nd of uh, 2018. I've been having one hell of a time for the last, I think, couple of days. Of course, what I've been doing is, what I'm always doing is, is uh, hooking up different hardware, different software, trying different things. Uh, it used to be, I used to have three or four computers in the, well, in, way back I had uh, Commodore 64s. I had a bunch of Commodores. One for my running the BBS on and one for doing stuff on and one for playing games and, put the, you know, I'm all the, but now I'm down to really, well, I don't know. I have my computer here, PC. Windows 10 or whatever, and then, of course, I don't, my son in the other room has his own computer. I don't even go in his room. He's he's grown, 40 years old. Uh, my ex-wife, we share the apartment, we all three share this apartment. She has her computer in the uh, living room there. I don't touch it unless there's a problem. She wants me to try to fix it. Usually my son will fix it for her. Uh, then I have a Chrome box, which, well, I'm to the point where I just have one computer hooked up here at a time. And I don't know, I think I need a new computer. This, I wouldn't need a new computer if I just was doing what, you know, reading email, surfing the internet, but trying to do these videos and, uh, Everything, and trying different stuff, that's the problem. I'm tempted just to uh, just uh, give up on uh, doing anything other than, you know, surfing the internet and paying my bills online, doing that kind of stuff. It's hooking up new software, hooking up new hardware uh, all the time is just, but anyway, the last couple of days, I don't know what in the hell has been going on. Nothing has been working right. The audio, I tried different, I just threw away a headset. Um, I never liked it and never used it, but I had it, and I finally I pulled it out to try to hook it. For the last couple of days, everything has just been going to crap. I'm not sure what it is, uh, but like I said, I'm always hooking things up. I hooked up, um, this is the cam link, it's a USB, goes into your camera. Now it only works with certain cameras, so you need to make sure. It happens to work with the uh, Panasonic G G7, so I hooked it up. And I thought, okay, this is, and I played with it in the past a little bit. I thought, okay, I'm, I'm going to start using it. It's a nice picture, and using a, finally using the camera that cost a lot of money. And uh, I thought, I'm going to use it. Then I tried doing other stuff, and I think it was because this was hooked up uh, for the cam. Uh, mouse was not responding well. Oh, everything. Then just been one thing after another. I, I, yesterday I got, oh, to hell with it. Just going to hook up my Chrome box for a while and do that. The Chrome box, what was it? I couldn't get an internet connection, I think. For, I've never had that problem before. And I don't know what was going on with that. Um, I've got a box PC. I forget the name of it or whatever. That I think I told you about in the past. I I got it and then I messed up, I think, on... It doesn't have enough uh, storage space to put on the Windows 10 upgrade or whatever it is. My grandson is supposed to, uh, no, I asked him, he never volunteered to do it. I asked him to check it out, see if he could figure out what was wrong. And I said, if you can't get Windows 10, you know, working on that box, just format it for me and put Ubuntu on there or any, you know, anything gets so I can use it. But last couple of days, anyway, I think right now, I, I think things are working okay. I've been trying Manny, right now I'm using uh, Manny Cam, right? Am I? No. I am using um, Movidia Video Suite desktop recorder. 
the microphone, I just hooked this thing back up, is this, whatever it is. I've used it many times. Finally got the, I had a, I, I tried, I tried everything here for the last few hours. So this is going to be a sort of a test. I know I'm always testing, but if I ever get, no, oh, that's what I'm saying. Used to be, uh, I also had uh, three or four, I think it was three computers hooked up in the past, and I had a switch, and I could just switch, yeah, there was four connectors on this thing. So I, I was using one keyboard, one mouse, one speaker system, or whatever. And it was pretty neat, especially if somebody would ask me to fix a the computer, then I just had this other, the fourth box hanging off with the connectors. I could just hook there. Didn't have to unhook anything of mine. Just, and I'd tell them, just, just bring your computer, you know. Then hook in my stuff into it. That was pretty neat. But I don't know what's going on. Frustration, frustration. Anyway, the uh, I'm back using... This is the uh, Logitech Brio camera that I'm dragging over here. As you will see, I'm just using one monitor, and this is my wide monitor. And it works out. I'd be using my 4K monitor if I was just doing what I wanted to do, surfing the Internet and whatever. But uh, for doing this, this, is, uh, this works out very well for me. I have two 1080 screens. I have one monitor, two 1080 screens, and I can do do stuff. If I'm working on my uh, blog or something, I can copy and paste over to it and edit and do all kinds. It just works out well. But uh, So this right now is just, just one monitor. Um, I have a 4K monitor I'm not even using, but if you watch the, I think the last video I was using, I had the 4K monitor right here. So this is the Brio uh, camera. The microphone on it is not bad. I don't use it, but it's not, you know, it's not bad for a USB, Logitech USB camera. But if you're making YouTube videos, you, you know, I think you probably want some better audio than that. Uh, over here is, I think the Logitech, well, we'll just turn it on. The uh, C922, I think. And it seems to have really nice color, but maybe the, uh, you know, the lighting is where you have your lights and stuff. Um, anyway, I think right now things appear to be working. I've been having trouble with the audio. I made a video the other day. Maybe you didn't see that video the other day. Because I made a video the other day, and I think that's where I was showing this monitor. Oh, you can't see. Well, I need to switch back here. I was using this monitor, and I had the 4K monitor here. And I made the video, and everything should have been okay. I tested it a little bit before I started. Got all done, and the audio was totally crap. Uh, I just sort of frustrated. Uh, I do think I could use a new PC. I'm tempted, as you know, to just uh, throw that thing out in the trash and just go with a, not do any YouTube stuff. Just hook up my Chrome box, which doesn't appear to be working. I don't know. I don't know what that was. It, that's, it'll start working. I mean, it'll work... Uh, so anyway, we have two cameras hooked up here. I wish I could get the, uh, wish I could, maybe now that this is working, maybe after I get off here, I'll plug this in again using this USB cable, and maybe it will work because it gives a nice, and then I haven't even installed the uh, app on there that would let me run this camera, and with my cell phone, I could zoom in and out and do do various things. Uh, so this is sort of a test video, but I wanted to also, you know, uh, 
say something about uh, George Bush, because I had a couple people. One, a liberal, very liberal friend of mine for years and years and years, and somebody else that's uh, politics are a little bit different than mine. And uh, they sort of like, well, the liberal friend of mine says, you know, said to me, you know, we, you know, uh, George H.W. Bush was not, uh, you know, not a bad, not a bad president, not a bad man. Um, and he said, I don't think either one of us, <coughs> you know, were upset with him or uh, or whatever. And the other person who was, is not a liberal friend of mine says, oh, you know, you, you're probably glad that George H.W. Bush is dead now because you all, you know, you people hate him and that kind of stuff. So, thought I might um, may express a few words on that. Um, no, I'm, you know, I mean, he had a long, long life, George H.W. Bush, uh, you know, combat uh, during World War II, shot down, picked up by a submarine, a, you know, a United States submarine, uh, was on that for a while, which would be kind of, kind of uh, scary, being on a submarine, I think, uh, especially a World War II <laughs> submarine. But uh, he served his country. He, um, I don't know all the positions. He was what, uh, CIA director. He was, uh, of course, vice president, and then eventually president of the United States. And he held other posts. So he had a, uh, a, good, a good career. My, um, I had some complaints with him, but no, I mean, I had some complaints about him, uh, thing, some of the things that he did, but there was no hostility, no, you know, not like it, not like it was with his son when he was elected, because his son uh, is not very smart, although compared to Donald Trump, his son seems like a road scholar, which, of course, Bill Clinton was a road scholar. But, uh, so, no, I, um, 97 years old, he had a long life, uh, now he's with his, you know, his wife, and, uh, so I, um, but I did have some complaints, uh, about him. When he was CIA director, of course, we, I, you know, we don't know much about what the CIA, but we know that Noriega, the president of Panama Canal there for a while, was a CIA, I'm not sure if you call him an agent or a, somebody was, Noriega, Noriega was being paid and working with the Central Intelligence Agency. And then when the United States decides to, uh, you know, so he was, uh, I mean, he was, I'm sure he was doing drugs, and the CIA was, okay, we don't care if he does drugs, you know, uh, as long as he does this other stuff we want him to do, that type of stuff, so. But I I, I never blamed uh, Bush, you know, George H.W. Bush, uh, because that's kind of the, I don't know, but it's still, I didn't like the idea that here this Noriega, who was a scumbag, you know, and, but then when, you know, he's one of our people, and no telling what he did for us, no telling what he, and, but then when it comes time, we just send the military down there and, you know, take him out. Uh, didn't kill him, but just put him in prison for the rest of his life. Um, so I, I had a problem with that. Uh, the other thing with, uh, you know, Bush, you know, when he was, well, there were other things, but when he was vice president, he had to know what was going on, you know, what Colonel North was doing in the basement. I'm not sure the White House has a basement, but he had to know that that uh, President 
Reagan knew, of course, what was going on. Of course, he, everybody says he didn't know her because it's not like the current situation. Uh, all the Republicans back then loved Saint, you know, Saint Reagan, and all the Republican. Well, everybody, you know, hates Trump. I mean, well, at least along the Republicans, he has no, you know, he doesn't have any. Well, he, I don't even want to get into that Trump thing, but when. When Reagan was president of the United States, he was doing things that he should have been. He should have been impeached for that. Although I don't want us in, impeaching presidents, we shouldn't be impeaching unless it's absolutely necessary to do. Uh, we shouldn't be, and we shouldn't be doing this lock them up, drill baby drill, uh, all this type of craziness which the Republicans have been doing for years. <sighs> but but Bush was, you know, in the in the Reagan White House. This is right after the Iran, you know, captured our embassy and didn't return it until and didn't return our people till uh, Reagan was on the uh, had taken the oath as president of the United States. And I think there was some talk about election rigging or fixing or whatever. I will never, there nobody would convince me that that somebody didn't uh, make a deal with, you know, hey, you know, Reagan is running and it would help us if you held on to these Americans and then we'll let them go and then we can wheel and deal because of course, the United States was enraged and still is enraged about Iran, about the hostage situation. And so then you have Reagan takes office, and of course there were laws passed that the United States, and not just the United States, nobody is to deal with Iran. No this, no that, nothing. It was passed. and. Reagan's people, Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense, everybody was, whenever they went before Congress for some reason, is the United States doing any dealings with Iran? No. Positive, you know, no, no, all kinds of, you're sure, you know, no, you know. Uh, there was also laws passed that the United States was not to deal with, uh, uh, not Costa Rica. Anyway, the Contras. And there was questions about, you know, are there, are you, is there anything? No, no, no. Under oath, you know, all these secretaries and heads of agencies and generals and everybody else know we have nothing to do with Iran. Uh, we have nothing to do, you know. And they were, you know, okay, well, you know, it's against the law. That, oh, yeah, we wouldn't, you know. And in the White House and Reagan's, Nobody accused Reagan, uh, but in the White House, the Reagan administration may, were, may, was making deals with Iran. We gave them weapons and uh, war, and uh, they gave us money. The Reagan administration took the money that they got and funded the revolution against Nicaragua you know, in South America, which was in violation of, of laws or whatever. So, I mean, if you're going to, these were impeachable things that somebody should have been really, uh, but like I said, in that case, you know, Reagan was doing his anti-communist thing, but still that was in violation of, I mean, you know, he's doing his, which we all knew, you know, his thing always all his life was anti-communism. Of course, he was. Uh, well, let's not go into Reagan's being a union official and then uh, telling, working with the FBI, working with other groups, and telling the FBI that these other groups were communist and all this kind of. And the FBI is making deals with you know, and before he was governor, and then he was when he was governor of California, the whole thing, you know, but. 
Still, so we knew what Reagan's position was, and so we, that's why I think the Congress and, and everybody was being asked, was asking him, are you, you're not doing anything. But, okay, I, I don't want him, didn't want him, you know, but Bush, had, his vice president, had to know that this highly illegal stuff, in violation of the oath that everybody took, protect and defend, you know, the Constitution of the United States, blah, 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 blah. But on the other hand, uh, the vice presidents, I mean, the terrible position. It used to be in our early uh, history of the United States, when we had a presidential election, the man who got the most votes became president. The man who got the second, you know, amount of votes, he became the vice president. So back then, and it, it was a bad situation, you had the president of one party and you had a vice president of the other party. Yes, that's why it was changed. We had to go into the Constitution eventually and we changed it so that you didn't have that situation. Now you have president wins and the vice president, you know, same party. Um, but, so you have the vice president, you know, what nowadays, oh, the vice president can't be, supposed to be supportive of the president. Although I've, I said up here with Trump that really if, if I were the vice president of the United States in, in his situation, I would just let him know, I mean, I would support him in, in, a, if, in the ways that I could. But it would be like, don't talk to me, you know, no commun don't don't talk to me, don't ask me, am I going to pardon you, Mr. President, when you are impeached, or I'm not going, or don't ask me when you get, you know, charges against your, you know, don't, it would be cut off. I had somebody say to me, well, the pr vice president has to do what the president of the United States, or the president could fire him. No, 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 the president cannot fire the vice president. Uh, but so, you know, Bush is, when you're the vice president, you are sort of, oh, God, you know. So that crimes were going on, and I think Bush was an honorable man, and he was the vice president, and so should he have tried to, should he have ratted on Nobody, <laughs> so I don't know, he did, you know, he did what he, he did okay. Uh, the other thing is, and there again, this, again, he couldn't do anything. But uh, Ronald Reagan, you know, I was watching the news or whatever and told the people around me or whatever, and I blogged about it, you know. Ronald Reagan, you know, President Reagan is too old. Uh, he has, he's having mental problems. Uh, he should, you know, resign or whatever because he was falling asleep and you'd see his wife would be telling him, you know, you know, wake up. Then she'd also be telling him, you know, this is the vice president or this is your secretary of state and whatever. And I'm watching this, you know, saying, my God, our president, President Reagan, uh, he needs to needs to resign. The vice president needs to take over, whatever. Well, it got so bad that uh, Congress, members of the Congress, Democrats and Republicans, back then it was uh, a lot different than it is now. Democrats and Republicans, oh my God. Uh, president Reagan, you know, uh, he appears to be you know, uh, he might have some problems. So it was like a little committee was put together of a few Democrats, you know, a few Democrats, leading Democrats, leading Republicans, a small number of people. And they said, uh, you know, to the White House, uh, we would like to come over and, you know, uh, talk to President Reagan and see what kind of, see what kind of condition he's in. And the White House said, oh, sure, yeah, sure, sure. And uh, not today. Uh, okay, well, uh, 
how about tomorrow? No, not tomorrow, you know. And I forget how long it went on. It, and, you know, then I was saying, you know, first I thought, okay, great. These people go over and they'll be able to talk to him. They know him. They're fr Actually, they all like him. And they can see what kind of can. But then it's put off for, you know, days and days and days. I don't know how long it was. can't remember now. Quite a while, I thought. And so then it was like, uh, you know, the White House, you know, calls up and says, oh, okay, uh, uh, come on over now. And I'm, you know, then I heard that, they, you know, they went over, they saw the president, they came out in front of the cameras, oh, President Reagan is great. We laughed and we joked and he told some jokes and we talked about the old days and everything is hunky-dory. And I thought, I don't think so. I think they figured out, is there a time of the day and a day of the week when President Reagan is knows that he's President of the United States? <laughs> and then is there, you know, do we, okay, what do we inject him with? Do we give him, uh, you know, cortisone or adrenaline or what do we shoot him up with or whatever? Okay, then get him over here quick or whatever. I think that's what the situation, you know, situation was. And there... Yeah, I can't. I don't blame. If Bush must have known, maybe he didn't. You know, Bush must have known. Oh my God, you know. But on the other hand, it would be the American people would just think if any vice president uh, were to be seen where it was looking like that he was trying to get rid of the president and uh, take over the position or shoving him out the door or doing anything, so. There wasn't anything Bush could, you know, could do. Um, but, uh, so yeah, I, no, I, I don't have any, no, I don't have any bad feelings about, about Bush. There were some policies and things that happened, you know, on, on his watch that being a, you know, being a liberal Democrat, but, uh, but you know, I've I've changed my opinion. It 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 used to be. I've changed it now because of Donald Trump. It used to be, in the old days. I said and thought and felt and believed. Okay, yeah, the Republicans, man, they have some people in there that are really terrible and are horrible people, but there are good men and women in the Republican Party. And now I, 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 I disagree with my, I was wrong. I think the Republican Party has always been, I mean, those people that were in there that were, you know, good, decent human beings, they were the minority and they had to know about, uh, you know, the really bad eggs in there and and because uh, we finally I mean back oh man long time ago Republican Party you know hated Franklin Delano Roosevelt they hated him with a passion because he came from their class you know and he in their opinion betrayed them uh, they hated him they oh forever they were opposed to Social Security and, uh, you know, Medicare and all of those things viciously. When uh, John F. Kennedy became president, they, you know, he, they just attacked him on a small, well, differently than they do nowadays, you know, but uh, they had, I remember, billboards up all across, well, all across the United States, but in the Kansas City area impeach the Earl Warren, you know, the uh, Supreme Court chief, chief of the Supreme Court, because uh, the Republicans thought that he was, you know, a communist, and they wanted him removed from the Supreme Court because of some of his rulings. And uh, then there was, of course, and still is, still around, the John Birch Society, a secret society 
militantly and strongly anti-communist, but actually anti-American, and of course anti, you know, against the Democrats or whatever. That's that's still around. Uh, but back then, I thought that we had that there were good people in there, but I, th I think it was a mistake. And I think it's funny. Uh, you know, President Obama gets elected, and I, like, along with a whole bunch of other Americans, we all thought, fantastic, finally, you know, change, improvement, we can see it. A black man was elected President of the United States. The American people, the majority of the American people voted for him. He was elected President of the United States. We've made progress. Long took a long time. We've made progress, but then, man, the bad segment of our population could not take. They they were willing to put up with, you know, eating in the T G and Y lunchroom eventually. You know, with colored people. Um, and other things, but when we had a black president, oh my God, that is okay. And so then you have what we have now, and then we see, now we can see, which I didn't see before, and I don't think a bunch of us saw before, uh, the cancer was always there, uh, of course, things conspired, you know, conspired to, you know, before in the past there were people who, uh, you know, spoke out from the Republican side and were able to speak out. Uh, well, my mind goes blank. Uh, I used to watch this TV show on every week on public TV. Oh, come on, come on. I can't remember. But uh, the leading not George Wells. Uh, anyway, when things were like, you know, impeaching the Chief Justice and when various things like that were happening in the Republican Party and you, we were starting to see, oh my God, these people are kind of, they're, you know, they're not a loyal oppo opposition or whatever. Um, how can I not remember his... Anyway, he's from the rip. He was conservative. National Review, the guy who started the National Review, I think, and who was a. He condemned these Republicans in his party, and you know, in print, and I guess Bobby TV too. And wow, people black, you know, backed away. From them, people said, "Yes, you're, you know," uh, and he had an effect. And then we thought, "Oh, okay. Well, there are good people in the Republican Party, and and they're trying to clean. They are aware of the problem in their party and trying to clean it up. And it looks like it had some effect. It didn't. Uh, but we get in the age of Twitter." Uh, internet, which, you know, I love computers and internet and all this type of stuff, but you get into this age and Fox News, talk radio, this type of stuff, and this stuff then, all oh, this hate and craziness comes out, and there isn't any buffer, and there isn't any, you know, Republicans who have the prestige that uh, or the ability to speak out against, and if they even if they do, they would you know be attacked and neutralized. Uh, so now we have the somebody said I should uh, I should be making this full screen when I'm doing this. I, I intended to uh, anyway. Uh, so now I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, really concerned for the United States uh, because 
it's now we see we don't have we don't have a we don't have two parties well we don't have two political parties that are loyal opposition or whatever we have the democrats that try to be the best they can and they're not perfect of course and but you have the republican party which is we're supposed to have a two well, i mean it'd be fine if we had more than two parties you know really but but we don't have the other party is what's the difference between the republican party and i don't know terrorist you know uh it's not just think that drives me crazy nobody seems to talk about it nobody seems to care about it the republican party for eight years they announced it and everybody accept you know everybody accepted the republican party said when Obama was elected, we're going to make sure that he's not a successful president. We're going to make sure we don't cooperate in any way with him. He's not going to have anything that's going to pass. We are, and so they spent the entire the political party, one of the two political parties, spent eight years, and they would not do anything. They tried to repeal Obamacare two or three hundred times. Uh, just they tried to bring the president down. Then when, you know, when you have a, you know, what if each, you know, that's just crazy. What if the Democrats, you know, just said, uh, okay, well, we had eight years of, you know, the Republicans doing everything they could to destroy the United States because that's what you're doing if you, you know, don't try to work together to accomplish something. You have eight years when nothing, you know, when the other party would not do anything. What if the Democrats just did that? Okay. So, so anyway, we're going to have to decide. I, there's no doubt in my mind that uh, Trump is going to probably have to resign. I mean, He's committed impeachable offenses every day. He's mentally deranged. He is so unbelievably stupid that uh, George Bush Jr., President Bush Jr., appeared to be. I thought he was uh, actually for for President Bush, the boy here. What number is he? Seventy? I can't. You know, we shouldn't have presidents of. Uh, you know, John Adams, John Quincy Adams, or, you know, uh, keep it simple, you know, uh, Bush 74, or what, I, you know, but when Bush Jr. was first elected, I thought, man, this guy's really stupid, but, if, and even his people then, if you, you wouldn't believe it, it doesn't make sense, it doesn't sound correct, but when you watch the news and you watch the people around President, you know, uh, President Bush, they basically said, yeah, he's not too smart, but we are, and we're all around him. We're all people that were with his father, and we're going to, and so you thought, well, okay. But, you know, during, when he was reelected, and I couldn't believe it, he was, <laughs> when he was reelected, and then he started doing things I thought, no, this, and I even blogged about it. I was blogging about it, you know, week in and week out or whatever. No, I think he's, I think he's a genius because he was doing things like one thing we, he made it uh, bankruptcy more difficult for people, not for banks or not for corporations and businesses, but for little people, he made it more difficult. And then he was doing, and I thought, and I, and I blogged about this, I said, it looks like he's trying to bring down the economic system, and then when they, when he crashes the economic system, then they're going to say, well, we have to cut Social Security, we have to cut Medicare, have to do away with Medicaid, and all that type of stuff. And then sure enough, there was, then there was that financial crisis, and I thought, wow, yeah, he's not... He's not stupid at all, but our current president is unbelievably stupid. 
he commits, he confesses to obstruction of justice and everything else every day. It's just unbelievable. And so I think he'll be, I think he'll have to resign. But uh, I got a friend who says, because I've said, you know, well, what's he going to do when his son and his son-in-law and maybe his daughter, you know, have criminal charges brought against him? Is he going to, you know, give them a pardon? Is he, is he going to, is his head going to explode? What's he, you know, what's he going to do? And... Uh, this friend said, well, he does love his family. And then I said, you know, I'm not sure he loves his family, honestly. Well, he seems to love his daughter. But I'm not sure he really loves his... I mean, he wouldn't want them, if they were minimized or whatever, that would make him look bad. He cares about that. But, I mean, if it comes down to... Because I said, you know, I think what he would do is make a deal, you know, I'll resign as president and no charges against me and no charges against but that's really unfair to think of all the people uh, other people so I don't know what's going to happen but I think I think Trump will have to resign and make a deal but it should be the deal should only be made if Trump says, yes, I'm guilty. I confess. I plead guilty to the following, you know, obstruction of justice. I think it should actually be treason. But, you know, all these things, I plead guilty to them, I am guilty. And then I think it should be, uh, if he, if he, leaves office like that, then he would still have, he would have, you know, his hardcore 30% or 35% or whatever it is, supporters, and something should be done, you know, because he can resign, then he can say, because he lies every day, and because he's stupid, he could say, you know, I was forced out, it was illegal, uh, What? so I think he should have to I don't see how he could renounce, I don't see how he could say, I don't see how they could say, okay, uh, you know, your pardon and your family's pardon, but you cannot engage in any political activity. Because then I think he could just go to a court case and I think a court, and eventually I think even the Supreme Court would say, uh, no, that's a violation of, you know, freedom of speech. So, I don't know. I, you know, there's people, like there's killers who have killed somebody and they, the judge rules that if there's a book or a movie, and there have been in those cases sometimes, that that person cannot reap the benefits of it. So, I don't know what's going to, I don't know what's going to happen. This I hope that we've, you know, these things that Trump is doing, has done, and is doing, and will do, we, uh, I hope we can look at it and say, okay, we never thought this was going to happen. We never thought we would have a president who wouldn't tell you what he's, you know, wouldn't show you his tax return. Now, that can be taken care of. Both the political parties, the Democrat and the Republican Party, uh, should put in there that you know if, if you you're not going to be running with us you know as a Democrat or Republican <clears throat> unless you have to release your tax return those some of those things those things should be taken care of that way of course what the American people should also do is if somebody is running for president and refuses to release their tax returns and you just shouldn't vote for them. That would be, you know, if everybody knew, okay, well, the American people will not vote for you if you don't release your tax return. But, but we should go through and look at the things that he's done. We should go through and look, uh, you know, what can we do 
with legislation and other, like, there's questions, you know, can the president pardon himself? I say no. That, I'm not a lawyer. I did take constitutional law, but not this type of constitutional law. Uh, so I think this would be a, a time that we, you know, because it's not going to affect him. I mean, whatever we do when he's out of office, but, but we should look at the problem. You know, we never thought we would have a president who would be looking at pardoning himself or members of his family. So I think we should go in and change. It would have nothing to do with him. It would just be that we saw that there was a problem. Also with uh, the, uh, I don't want to say College of Cardinals, <laughs> the Electoral College. Um, the only problem with that is it's going to look like the Democrats are trying to keep Republicans from being elected or something because it's twice in recent history the Republicans have won in the Electoral College but they lost a the popular vote and but I do we need I, you know I don't that's going to be the problem because the Republicans are going to say, well, you're just doing that because, you know, but that's not it. It's a problem and it should be fixed, but I don't know how you fix it without, you know, Democrats would come across looking like they were trying to do something when they're just trying to solve a problem. Um, but we should look at all the little things that have popped up and some of these things should be fixed, you know, with legislation. And, you know, when Trump, when Trump got elected, he was saying that the Democrats were trying to uh, redo the election. And well, that was never the, it was never the, the Republicans were, I mean, the Democrats were never, okay, Trump really didn't win. Uh, and so we're going to take him out and put Hillary Clinton in. That was never the thing. He was just not, that's just part of his nutty, you know. But we should look at what do we do when you have some of these type of situations. And two, what do you do when, I don't know, they, oh, smart people, I'm not in that class. What we should do is we should make this a learning moment. What can we do to improve things? One of the things should be, yeah, there should be no president who can pardon himself. And there should be a procedure set up. Actually, there is, there are procedures that have been set up before, you know, in the White House and how they handle things, you know. Somebody request a pardon. Have they, you know, have they admitted their guilt? Have they served X amount of, there are procedures that go through, go through, go through, go through, signed off, and then goes to the president. Uh, should the president be able to just say, uh, I like so-and-so. Yeah, I think I think there should be some, but it should be, uh, you know, if he's just going to pull somebody out, just pull some name out without it having been going through all these different steps, should that be allowed? Yes, but there should be something where, in that case, maybe three people or four people have to also agree you know, all these others can go through the step. If they go through the steps, they go to the president and the other branch. But maybe it should be if you just pull somebody out who hasn't gone through every one of these other steps, maybe the uh, chief justice of the United States Supreme Court would have to uh, sign off and maybe the uh, speaker of the house would have to sign off and maybe the uh, Senate majority leader would have to sign off. Something like that. That's probably not a good idea for various reasons. 
but there ought to be something we could come up with to improve the situation. But I hope that when this Trump situation gets resolved, that we can learn from it and find some way to, but I, I'm just afraid if, uh, we've never had a situation, I don't believe ever, where we had a president of the United States saying, I don't, I don't agree with the Central Intelligence Agency. They're wrong. They're a bunch of Hillary supporters. We've never had a president of the United States who said, I don't agree with, uh, the CDC. They're Hillary supporters. Uh, we never had a president who says, you know, I don't agree with the Environmental Protection Agency. I don't agree with the Secretary of Defense. We've never had somebody and who has absolutely uh, no reason for, you know. So I don't know. Let's just hope that when this horrific, horrible, unbelievable situation is over, that somehow we can fix some of the things that we've seen. But that's not even getting into what are we going to do when you have this other, you know, when you have Democrats and Republicans not being able to work together. Back, you know, a few years ago, I noticed it when, uh, well, that'd been in the 90s, maybe before. But I was working and it was like, the people I worked with were Republicans, right-wing Republicans. And it was like, uh, well, it was when Newt, yeah, was Speaker of the House, too. He was the one who sort of started it. No cooperation with the other side, no negotiations, uh, no concessions, or whatever. And I, and I was like, well, wait, wait, you know, I'm telling, talking to these people that are my friends, I, I think. I don't think they thought I was a friend as much as I thought they were friends, but because I was a communist, in their opinion, uh, they were like, no, no cooperation. And I, but <laughs> that's the way our founding fathers set this thing up, you know, three branches of government, uh, you know, a Senate and a House. They set up all these things, and the whole idea was, the way everything was set up was that, you know, hey, I would like to have such and such. Well, the other side, well, we don't want you to have such and such. Well, let's look, you know, okay, okay, well, well you know, and you you made deals, you worked out things, you negotiated, you uh, came to agreements, and it became with the Republicans, no cooperation, no giving of anything, this is war. And I don't know how we're gonna, you know, don't know how we're going to fix it. Um, anyway, how long is this video? Oh my God! Well, you won't be able to watch. You wouldn't. Have, you're not going to have made it to this far anyway. So, and I hate talking about politics. And I know immediately at least half of you, more than half, half of you don't want to hear my views on politics because you disagree. <laughs> so, there you're gone. But even the people who agree with me, they're sick and tired of hearing about politics. And they know, and I know that, of course, people will say, well, Jim, you're not going to convince, you know, these people. I know that. I had a computer bulletin board system in the past for years before the World Wide Web. And I covered every, there was, you know, birth control, and then there was a statement or a policy or an explanation for and against gun control, for and against uh, all the issues that we have. You know, that was back then. And these were, and then people discussed it. Nobody ever changed their opinion. Gun control, uh, abortion, uh, what were the other things? All of, except, I take that back, 
I had a section on the best hamburgers or the best fast food or something like that. And uh, I can remember people did change their own that, but it was okay. People discussed it and some people, because I remember White Castles. I never heard, we didn't have White Castles in Kansas City. And somebody said, oh, White Castles, White Castles, we don't have them here. And then it was like, they were opening a White Castles and I went, oh, I loved, I still love White Castles. And people then changed, oh yeah, I, tr I just had some, you know, they were, they were good and I changed my, you know. But on the other issues, nobody ever changed an opinion. Nobody ever said, you know, yeah, the, in the newspaper today there was three shootings and I was in favor of guns but now I think we need some restriction. That never did anything like that ever happen. And so I, I know nobody changes their opinion. That's not good, but anyway, I shouldn't be discussing it. Anyway, thank you very much. I hope this audio worked. Well, maybe not. It might be a good thing if this doesn't work out and then I can just delete the whole thing. I'll turn off so you won't see any advertising. I'll also put a warning here, you know, political stuff. If you're like everybody else and you don't want to hear about political stuff, go someplace else. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, there are some things that for YouTube that a somebody who creates content, you have to have X number of uh, numbers of subscribers in order to get certain benefits. And I'm not talking about benefits of money, but I'm talking about, you know, ability to use certain features of the thing. So it would help. I think though the next level I need is 30,000 or something rather. So I don't even have 3,000 yet. So I don't think I'm going to, shoot up to that next level but if you can go ahead and subscribe click the little bell too that way every time i create a video you'll get a, a notice thank you very much for watching